Welcome to week nine of Saturday Shop Tours. Uh, today we're going to feature my friend from art school, Joe Sheldon, uh, and his friend, uh, his partner, Eli, uh, of Prada Custom Guitars. Uh, they have this really cool shop. Uh, they're going to walk us through and show us you know, what they do there, their tools, do a little demo of some, some of the awesome uh, wood that they're using. And, um, and we'll take it from there. Well, here Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to our little shop here at Prana Custom Guitars in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So this is my partner, Eli Martin. Good morning. And uh, we built it. So uh, the shop here is in my basement. Home, and my children wanted the basement finished off, so I decided to finish off the basement. I just finished it off for me. So we put a wood shop in. So... A little bit about the shop. I don't want to bore you with too many details about machine. We uh, we source wood from all over the world. So one of the things that we like to do in our shop is we get to use any materials that we like. Unlike a big manufacturer or a place that's making thousands of, of guitars a day or a week, we make approximately five to 15 guitars a year. Um, we also do a lot of repair work and some restoration on some different uh, interesting instruments. We actually uh, have, a, have an instrument here that's 34 years old. Uh, it's like the old John Entwistle from the Who base, and we're working on that and putting new inlays in it. So we kind of mix it up with building and also repairs. So in our shop, we kind of have it set up. That wood comes in and it hits our, our this, is, this rack is a final stage for seasoning our woods. We actually have a kiln built into that as well in the bottom. Uh, moisture content of the wood is very, very critical when you're building a, a guitar and making sure that all the woods that you assemble together are of the same moisture content or they can bend and warp later on down the road after the customer has paid for their, their expensive instrument <laughs> and it's home and they go to California or they go to Maine or they go to Florida. So moisture content and what we do to stay, keep the wood stable is uh, of the utmost importance. So that's why we go to great lengths to make sure everything is dried out uh, as far as water and also resins in the wood. There's sap in the wood. So we, we do a lot to take care of that as well. Um, so as far as any of our large machines, uh, we have general stuff. We have uh, regular arm saws. Uh, this is actually a mill. And this can work with metal or wood. We can carve into uh, metal parts to make new parts for uh, guitars because they have they have wood parts and metal parts alike. So uh, sometimes things need to be re repaired and and, and corrected. Uh, and then just general bandsaw and table saw and joiners. And this is a drum sander. We put wood through here, and we can control the thickness of it and also how smooth it is. And we have, we keep necks for our guitars. We build them ahead of time and let them season sometimes for years before we actually build with them. Again, it's, it's, it's very critical that everything's seasoned and uh, acclimated to our shop and uh, the, the humidity level down here. So, and, and there's a lot of specialized machines as well. This, this unit here, it has a swing arm on it and that's to create the radius that's in the top of a fingerboard on a guitar neck um, where our gu guitar necks have a, they have a curve to the top of where the, the strings go along. They're not flat. So they have to be uh, carefully, carefully done. People have them at different sizes, 12 inch radiuses and seven inch. And so we can uh, adjust. And the whole thing with us is we're custom. So whatever a customer wants, we, we want to be able to do. The one thing that's not like going to a big box store and buying a guitar where you kind of, it's a cookie cutter thing and you might have a few different selections. Uh, this way, the customer can actually come here during the build, throughout the build. They can feel the neck of the guitar. If they want to adjust it, make it thicker, thinner, whatever they'd like to do, we can, we can, we can work with that during the time of the build, which is really nice. So, um, one of the things, I, I don't see them live anymore. I hope you guys are on. Yeah, you're good, Joe. We're good? Yeah. Okay. One of the things I wanted to show you is, uh, is some of the woods that we get. So if you guys are watching any of the furniture things or online, you've seen like epoxy. It's real big right now. People are doing tables with live edge tables. 
and we can actually bring some of those things into the guitar world. So some of the things we do is we source burls, which are like, uh, if you've seen a tree with a big ball on the side, that's the tree trying to heal itself. And it's like a cancer. Maybe somebody shot the tree with a bullet, maybe a branch broke off and, and mold starts to form in the tree. So the tree tries to heal itself by growing around that mold. And the mold keeps growing and the tree keeps growing around it, you get a big ball. Well, those balls are beautiful, especially when they're in water, so they get more molded. So I'd like to show you some of these, some of these opened up and book matched burls that we use in our building. So So mostly from California, we get something called Buckeye Burl. And uh, this is just, just an amazing wood to build, to build guitars with. It, um, it doesn't look like so much dry, but I'm going to show you something. When it gets wet, it really comes to life. And so where it's blue or gray is actually where mold was eating the wood. And this is part of the wood that's not eaten by the mold, but is slightly affected by it. So wood like this, uh, this comes from mostly uh, California, Oregon, the Northwest part of the country. And these burls, uh, this is actually book matched. So this is sliced open. So the burl would be a big round ball and they cut sections of it and open it up in book matches. So that's how you get sort of the Rorschach sort of uh, design that occurs because it, it's, it's next to each other in the cut. So these become the tops of guitars, some of our guitars. So uh, if you'd like to know what they look like once they're in a guitar, this is the same type of wood. This is Buckeye Burl wood. And you can see it almost looks like a starry night kind of Van Gogh piece Beautiful. and a lot of other woods as well and there's this is all dyed and there's maple and purple heart but we even put it up at the end in the headstock so this is one of our completed instruments it's just left-handed because i'm left-handed uh, uh but that's how it comes out and we even have knobs made out of it if we like pretty much anything so that's how it comes out so talking about the burls and epoxy so we just started to do more of the epoxy things because it's kind of it's kind of hot right now and we'll buy burls this is also a section of a burl this is from a cap so you want to step back a little bit point it down. and again this is something that we'll pour epoxy all over and make one solid piece and then carve our guitar out but these these burls it's hard to tell when they're dry but just to show you kind of what they what they look like wet you can see that and we'll uh get closer there you go so that's kind of a, a burl that we'll actually use to build a guitar out of that wow. and what it starts to look like when we pour epoxy out of it and then we'll, we'll put it on the top of the guitar here's one this is just the top and we're building a guitar out of this and this is the same sort of burl that this is we've processed it further and we this is in the middle of production we're gonna uh, obviously build a guitar out of this but just to show you a little bit of that river kind of effect that we'll have that will be on a guitar so that will eventually in the next few months there'll be the strings and the pickups and all of that and they'll be able to get some of that in the guitar so what we try to do is um, build the highest quality guitar we can, but also add the art. So like Carl said, we went to art school together. And um, when I got out of school, I got back into the restaurant and uh, sales field. So I did that for a long time and still did my artwork on the side, but really found that I really liked working three-dimensionally much better than two-dimensionally. Making a nice picture and sticking it on the wall is nice, but for me, I kind of like the fact that we can build a functional piece of art that we can do for another artist who creates their own art with it. 
and so many more people can enjoy it that way. So being a part of that chain is actually something that I, I really enjoy doing. And uh, that's just something that, that, that we like to do. And we have a couple professional musicians using our, our instruments all over the country. And uh, it's, it's been a joy to do. So that's a little bit about some of the woods. What Eli's working on, one of the custom instruments we're working on right now is a, is a seven string bass. And Eli's actually cutting slots into this ebony. This is a stingray. So here, let me show you what, again, with the water, it's hard to see when it's, when it's not uh, polished. But it's a stingray, and we're building this instrument for somebody who lives in California right on the water. And uh, they see stingrays all the time around their boat. They live on a houseboat. And so this is the body of that instrument that we're creating that's going to be joined with that later down the road. And we try to incorporate shapes of the stingray uh, into the body and give it a, a theme. So that's, this is one of the things that we're working on currently. Um, we also get to do different work with stone and uh, metal. I, it'd be hard to show how this is done, but all these markers that are in this guitar are all hand done with brass and turquoise that we actually get turquoise from uh, the Midwest. And we, uh, we make our own markers and install them into the guitar. Uh, basically at every part of the guitar, we try to, to, to do something custom and make it in house. Um, also incorporating things from nature. So that's the shell. So we have that in, inlaid into the guitar and we try to incorporate something from nature in every piece besides the wood. So that's something that we also try to do. Um, all, all the wood also, we have all CITES approved wood. So some of the things about the uh, exotic woods is they're regulated by a treaty that goes all around the world and things like rosewood, they cannot be bought and sold and just sold all over the world without having proper paperwork to do it correctly. So we don't, we keep our trees and there's plenty of wood in the future for future guitar builders to build with. So we only source our woods from CITES approved vendors as well and try to use reclaimed wood when possible also. So also we try to do stuff a little differently too. Right now we're also working on another guitar. This is actual real skin. This is actually real bone constrictor skin that we've uh, we bought a hide. The snake died of natural causes in, in Canada and we bought the hide and we're doing a series of, of uh, snake skin guitars that are gonna be kind of a Southern Texas style flavor. No boots, just guitar. So we're working on that as well. Uh, so a little bit about us and Eli's background. Eli was, uh, you wanna talk about a little bit about your background? I started in uh, construction and carpentry, working with wood. Got real cold in the winters, so I uh, transitioned into uh, being a mechanic, working on automobiles. Worked my way up into some of the lower levels of NASCAR. It was a little tough to start a family when you're uh, on the road traveling all the time. So I took those skills and transitioned into industrial maintenance, where I could uh, take a production line and make it run at its utmost efficiency. and. Uh, learned automation and machining and those skills with my love for wood and creativity and music have all culminated in uh, the black magic of making guitars. <laughs> awesome. That's it. It's, it's, it's much more glamorous than my story. <laughs> <laughs> Eli brings the, um, I certainly had the art background, Carl. And um, not a, not a woodworking background, uh, actually none at all. And I uh, came to a point where I was doing very well in my career and had about 40 uh, expensive German guitars and got tired of being able to buy custom instruments and they were, I was kind of let down, even spending thousands and thousands of dollars. So one day I sold almost all my instruments but one. I sold just about, just about 18, 19 instruments to fund my shop and uh, had no idea how to build guitars. I uh, had been working on them and doing repairs, but never built one. 
So it was kind of a leap of faith, and that started in 2014. So we've been building. Eli didn't join me in the beginning. I was by myself, but he joined about four years ago, and uh, it's it's it, it's been wonderful. And it's nice to be able to create. You know, I'm one of those corporate guys. I still have my corporate day job, my sales job. Um, and it's wonderful to be able to help customers in that sense, but it's really nice to be able to get back to art and creating something from nothing and, and being able to, to, to make other artists happy in the process. Is, uh, it's a great joy. We love it. And we don't do a lot of work, but the work we do, we try to keep it very high quality. We're not a big production shop. We're a, we're a small boutique shop. Um, and although small, we do, we take very, very uh, great measures to do things as, as well as possible. Um, and down the road, we'll be getting into the CNC. I'm sure you, you might have seen some CNC mills and some of the guitar shops. And it, you run the risk of things becoming a little cookie cutter in one sense, but also things becoming very consistent in another sense. So there's a there's a balance there between you know tradition and technology, but we'll try to uh, maintain and keep our artistic edge to what we do, but be able to increase production a little bit when sure. we have a CNC machine. So. All right, Joe. We're Joe. We're right at ten minutes out. So uh, perfect. Uh, if there's a, a, a one question I have, Joe. So you said you build uh, seven to ten a year. Is that right? Yeah, I think our biggest year, Carl, was I think we built thirteen in one year. Okay. And actually, it became uh, we 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 scaled it back because we felt we couldn't have the control over things. So about ten a year is really what we're comfortable with at the moment. And what, what, what kind of effort uh, hours wise goes into, I mean, I know they're all different, but on average, what kind 100, of effort? 100 to 150 hours. Wow. Minimal. Right, right. Some of that, <laughs> the, the length of the process is much longer. That's the actual time you're working on the instrument. But so many things, when we work on a neck, uh, we first start to carve the neck. We do a lot of carving, as you know, Carl, if you cut the wood, you allow no moisture to, and the other, it can move. So okay. neck is being the most critical part. It can take, like I said, we, we'll let wood, wood season for years. And then throughout the build process, when we start to cut into the wood, we'll let it rest for a few weeks. But after we've made some major changes to the wood and allow it to settle and then re-straighten it out. Wood is a bad dog. One of the greatest builders of, of instruments I've ever met, he said, wood is a bad dog that needs to be trained. And it, and, and it, and it, it kind of does. It kind of does what it wants to. No matter how hard you try, sometimes it cooperates and sometimes it says, I don't want to be straight. I want to be a you. <laughs> and we do it, right? Right. We make another one. So, And usually if somebody's going to order an instrument and they make a deposit, we usually ask for a 30 to 50% deposit, depending on who it is okay. and what the instrument is. Um, well, it's about a year to 18 months, about 12 months to 15 months to get an instrument built uh, the way that we do it and um, with, with, with the customization that people usually ask for. So that's about what our, what our work is like. I have a question about the epoxy. Sure. Um, it looked like that was blue epoxy. Do you use colorants or? Yes, we do. So you buy the epoxy clear. So all the epoxy that you've seen that are that's colored, somebody has added things to it. And some of the things you can add are dye, like a, like a fabric dye. And that will give it a, a shade. And then there's also like little mica, like little reflective, like that would go in paint, like a metal flake paint. So you can put almost anything in it you like, but if there is a recipe, and if you add too much to it, it won't cure properly. So being a guitar maker, we have to learn, we have to wear a lot of different hats. We have to be electricians, because all this stuff has been wired, it's all electronic. We have to be woodworkers, we have to do finishing. He has to be good at math, so he can, <laughs> so he can tell me how to do stuff, and then also work with the resins. So we, we do a lot of experimentation. So there's a, we'll be filling this next. And there's, there's resins that fill a, a space. And then there's also resins that just drink into wood and harden it. This was the same Buckeye Pearl 
uh, wood as I showed in the beginning, but you can see it's all blue and green because I've taken some resin that was like water and poured it into this wood and it drank in and it drinks in at different, different ways and different parts of the wood with the grain. But yes, we add stuff to that. It all comes clean. So, and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. It's very important for us to do because we do something different and custom all the time. We always do little small tester pieces. We'll experiment, we save pieces of the wood and we'll test it out first before we actually build the guitar. Hey Joe, I got a question about, uh, you mentioned uh, <clears throat> uh, a lot about extracting the moisture, managing the moisture in the wood, but also you mentioned resin, uh, the resins that are in the wood. How, how do you go about doing that? Identify, is it the type of wood? Some woods have more resins than others. And how do you go about locking that down or managing? Uh, an oven. Uh, we bake it. We bake our wood. Uh, it's a matter. So as you can imagine, if you took the Liberty Bell and you threw a wet cloth over it and then rang it, it's not going to ring very well. So the soft resins in the wood, once the water leaves, you're left with that sap. So what we do is in our kiln, excuse me, we have a kiln that I can set and leave on as long as I like, and I can take it all the way up to 150 degrees if I so choose. But what we'll do is we'll dry the woods way down below 6%, which is too dry to work with. And, and we'll leave it there for a long time and that resin will harden. Okay. It, if you've been in your attic and you've seen the beams and they actually have sap coming out of the ends of some of them, that's mm -hmm. the, that's the yeah. heat making resin into the uh, into the wood and that we buy our wood already dried and it's already commercially kiln dried but they don't do a very good job of it not not for instrument grade so then we'll bake it again for well, about a week or so and then let it come back and it has to reacclimate and bring enough moisture so it's it's relative to the room and that hopefully those resins harden in there. Okay. they turn <clears throat> And then it rings. Then when you pound on the wood and you tap on it, you can hear it sounds like a marimba. It has a really different sound. You wow. can hear. Very so good. important. Thanks. Thanks. Sure. <clears throat> Want to show a couple more instruments, Joe? Sure. First of all, your work is awesome, folks. Um, when you. Uh, when you're approaching a project, do you let the, the client um, indicate, you know, what type of electronics they want in, or do you base it off of the, the type of wood that you're using and the resonance of the wood and that sort of thing? We're currently arguing about that. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, Eli wants to have a menu that they can choose from, and I like to give everything custom. And there's, <laughs> there's pros and cons to everything. So... What happens is we've had people come and play one of our guitars and say, we love that, we love that. I want it just like the way I want it. And we actually have built a few guitars to exactly what we're told to build. And usually the person does not like it because they think they hear something else that they fall in love with. But for some reason they decide, well, I don't want it like that. I want it how I want it. And then we build it like that and they've been unhappy. So you run the risk of, Musicians think they know how to build guitars and they think that they know what it will sound like when they change one thing or another. And being a musician for 35 years and being an instrument maker for 10, I can tell you musicians don't, that what happens in, in, in the wood is it, it's, it takes a long time, a lot of years to really understand what happens and, and where you place the pickups and how it's gonna to affect tone. So we try to give some direction and say, we feel like this is what works well and allow people to make choices and short change pickups and that sort of thing. But try to try to keep it within a realm of what we know that works, a recipe that works. <laughs> cool. we, got, we have a couple minutes left. Any other questions? Cool, thanks. Well, I do have another one about the epoxy. Sure. <laughs> um, do you use like a, a mold and pour it into so it takes a particular shape? Yes. You, yeah. A mold. We have to mold our molds. So everything we do is flat. So we'll use just regular wood 
and we'll make a little wall around it and we put packing tape. So you got clear packing tape and we put a little paste wax on it and you can pour the epoxy in and pull it right out. It won't stick to it. So each, they're different shapes. So we'll, we'll build like a little table, a little, a little two inch little wall around it. And the epoxy, there's different kinds of epoxy, but the deep pour epoxy that you can pour very deep is about $150 a gallon. <clears throat> that about three days to cure. Uh, so it can leak out. So we build a mold and we pour it and we let it, give it a few days and carve it just like wood. Oh, okay. Carve it. Hey Joe, one more uh, question if I could. The, um, so you do um, electric guitars primarily. And <clears throat> I, I noticed the, the various designs, uh, the, the flare uh, uh, of the body. Is there a minimum dimension that you have to start with and then you work from there as to adding uh, the, the different uh, design elements to it? Yes, yeah, yeah, very, very, very astute. <laughs> so there's a whole balancing act. So, yeah. you know, you want the guitar, it needs to sit at, at, a, at a place in the body that's comfortable. The neck needs to stay up, not down. And so they call that neck dive. So you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. There's a ratio for weight that we have to watch where the center of gravity is and where it's going to fall on the body. And we can adjust that. Here's another instrument that we made yeah. where, yeah. and you'll, sometimes the bridge is very low in the body. It comes deep into the body, which brings the neck into the body. And sometimes you'll see a bridge up higher, which extends it out further so they can reach and play more leads if it's a guitar. A guitar play. I play bass. That's, <laughs> that's my personal bass. <laughs> that beautiful, beautiful. The weight distribution to be considered. Yeah, yeah. I assume that that there's got to be like a fundamental set of uh, a foundation that you start with, and then you can work from there to, you know, expand the design. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. Beautiful. Great shot. Somebody made a flying V. Yeah, V guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them don't work well, but people keep buying them, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're right at nine o'clock. Joe, Eli, thank you so much. This was amazing. Was awesome. Thank you. Both. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Great thank work. you. Thank so you. Much. Appreciate your time. Yep. Uh, you uh, join us next week. Uh, Tim Scanlon, who's on the line here, is going to show us his wood shop. So Tim Scanlon. Yeah. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Thank Take you. The broom out. Uh, we'll see, see you. you. Bye. See you, everybody. <clears> Thank <throat>